Hello and welcome to this week's video, My Hero Academia. This week I'll be looking at UA Battle Heroes, the most recent OVA. You know the rules and so do I. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment section down below and you will be run out in a future video. Whilst you're there, be sure to do all the YouTube stuff that YouTube wants you to do because YouTube is an increasingly scary place for small broadcasters. Like, favourite, subscribe, click the bell and do all that kind of stuff. It truly does me a power of good. Now, as we now got into the review itself, I just want to say, as we get into the positives, there's two things I just want to point out here and now. First of all, is that this OVA is weirdly period appropriate. This episode itself takes place around New Year's Eve, like a couple days before it, and this review goes out a couple days before it as well, so that's a weird quirk of serendipity. I will admit that I... Going into this one, I just thought it was going to be about this card game that we were playing. I didn't know there was going to be a seasonal spin to it. I just thought this was going to be some kind of promotion thing for some training card game that they're going to be having in Japan now or at some point in the future. Which is, you know, neat. We're on ball. We're period appropriate. We've got kind of another Christmas special in this series, which I'm totally fine with. And the second thing I want to point out as we start to get into the positives proper is that many of the positives I have towards this OVA are almost exactly the same as with the last one. So if you heard some of these things before, I apologise but it really resonated with me and it's kind of hard to say these things a different way. So with that said, I will say that this OVA was everything that it needed to be. It was light, bright and breezy, a hell of a lot of fun, a great little side adventure. And even Minetta acting like a weird little perv goblin wasn't enough to drag it down. It had a warmth from humour to it which was really hard to beat and an enthusiasm for everything happening on the screen which really made it a joy to watch and brought a slice of life quality that the main series is sorely lacking. As is always the case with this kind of episode, this kind of story, I wish that there was more like this. I really do like the slice of live superhero high school stuff. I really enjoy it. I understand that they really can't do anything more of that in the main series as it currently stands. OVA set in the past, sure. I know there's like a spin-off series that is just covers more of their just normal shenanigans and going on events. I've not had a chance to read that yet, so maybe at some point in the future. And to be fair, given where this episode is currently placed in the main timeline, I can understand why they aren't doing more wacky things, as is something that they reflect upon within the episode itself. This OVA takes place last season, a couple days after the Christmas special, which makes sense because it's nearly New Year's Eve, so with that in mind, it's not like they can go out and have fun because... You know, they'll get murdered by a skinny jean wearing nutcase with bad skin or stabby McWaifu because that's where they are with the story at that moment. But I will say is that, see, in this episode, we see our cast acting like stupid teenagers, which is something I'm really happy, happy for. Way too many TV shows just don't do that. They just treat them like mini adults, which is something I really do not like. Teenagers can be some of the most dumb people on the planet. They can get up to all kinds of stupid stuff. So having an episode where they just do that and act their age is really refreshing. Seeing our characters act more like human beings and not just supporting characters and main characters in an anime is just really refreshing and I like to see that. I understand that they can't do that kind of stuff frequently because it will kind of get in the way of stuff but hey I'm fine with this episode. I had a smile on my face from almost start to finish. I will admit that maybe part of the reason why I really did like just how bright and fun this episode was is possibly because with the main series we're now starting to get into the final act, the final season or couple seasons depending how all this is paced out. And as I've mentioned in my main review of the previous season, we're starting to pivot into an area that's becoming increasingly joyless and I'd hate to say it a little bit miserable. So stuff like this where our characters are just having fun and doing silly stuff really shines a lot brighter. But hey, you can check my link to the review of the previous season somewhere in this video to begin on how YouTube is doing these things. Now, there is a question that's been nagging in the back of my heart mind when it's come to this this particular OVA, which is the question of, could this have been an episode in Season 5? And maybe, I will admit that doing two Christmas slash holiday themed episodes in the middle of summer might have taken the piss slightly, but given the Christmas episode itself ends with a line with our character saying something along the lines of, this was the last time that any of us truly had fun together, an episode like this would have played into that, or possibly undermined it, given that this episode happens a few days later and it's still kind of fun. Unless, you know, Midoriya didn't have fun. <gasps> oh no! Exposed. Exposed. 
this is a largely humour-based episode, and as I've said previously, I was smiling almost constantly all the way through it. It was just silly knockabout fun for the most part, with a lot of that humour being character-based. I will admit that it was a lot of dumb, silly humour, a lot of just riffing on our cast members, which is something that I'm perfectly fine with. One of my favourite gags, though, in the episode, and it's more of a visual gag, is the fact that these playing cards that they're using look like anime versions of our main cast. So you have anime versions of anime characters that are given them exaggerated big eyes, which <laughs> I will admit, cute little thing, but I would have gone further with that. I would have gone further with the parody of all of that and the designs of it because I feel that's something that's missing. But with that said, I think that the episode as itself, when it comes to animation, which I'll talk about shortly, was just really great almost all the way around, particularly when we get to some of those fights. The fights themselves in the card game itself were fine. They really did run the gambit as far as quality is concerned from my point of view. At worst, they were fine, fun, if short. I mean, the one with present Mike versus Coda was a fun little throwback. The thing with Mineta and his team getting beaten, which was fun. <laughs> and we have the bit where Sarah's little guy got squashed by Mount Lady. And once again, I was expecting Mineta in the background to shout something along the lines of, Oh God, I wish that was me. But of course, he got his in the end. He got horribly melted by acid. Like in this episode, we see some of our cast members or a proxies of them just get straight up killed. We see Denki getting vaporized, which is getting Sarah getting crushed. Death. And Minetta being melted with acid. And he turns around and goes, What did I do to deserve this? Well, you know what? Everyone gets what they fucking deserve. <laughs> oh, God, I love this episode. <laughs> I will admit, though, to be blunt, I think it's fair to say for everyone that's seen this OVA that everyone's favourite fight was the one between Bakugo and Midoriya, their little animated cartoon character virtual versions of themselves i think the animation for that was just really superb i didn't like the part where the sound effects and the soundtrack dropped for dramatic effect i think that took something away from it and i really don't know what it added into it but as a whole i think it was really fun i understand why they ended it on a draw because you know, this it kind of would imply things. I think that it would have given... I don't even know where to, how to express it, so we'll move on with that. The animation itself, I have to say, for the most part, was probably some of my favourite action animation in this entire series, I have to say. It's a shame that it's just as short that it is. It ends in a draw, and then they have the rematch, and that ends in a draw. <laughs> even though the matchup is so frigging absurd. It's All Might! Versus a pupper. Who's going to win? Oh, All Might, because he's such a hecking nice guy, just helps a little lost pupper and it ends in another draw. Cute gag. Cute gag. I really did enjoy that. I think the episode as a whole, this OVA as a whole, I, I, I really did love it. I really did enjoy it. it. It's the kind of light, bright, goofy bullshit I think this series nearly needs more of. It's something that has become increasingly rare as the story has gone on. Understandably so, given the subject matter in the latter series, the latter halves of the series, but hey, it, again, this is something that we really do need a lot more of, I think, even though I think it's going to become increasingly rare as we go forward. With that said, however, let us get into the negatives. And I'll just point out here and now, before anyone picks me up on this, I am aware that when this was first released, the subtitles were off. For those of you that watch it subtitled like me, it, it was off. On Crunchyroll, it was off. There was a delay on it. That wasn't the case when I watched it. I will have to say that there was a typo towards the start of the episode itself. I think, I don't remember exactly what it was. I think they said when, when they should have said where. But in either case, it was a blink and you miss it kind of thing. And you kind of get the implication from that. And I think that given all the comments on that uh, release saying that the, the, the subtitles are off, the subtitles are off, the subtitles are off, uh, the subtitles are off. I think that people at this point are just fine to being able to just watch it. But hey, beyond that, I think the episode itself, as an actual negative I think I have with it, kind of flirts with the idea of being important enough to be in the main series. Like with Save Rescue Training, there is a part towards the start of the episode which feels like it should be an important plot thread for the main series. 
the fact that this is taking place in that time period last season where our characters are essentially on lockdown for risky getting killed or captured by the villains feels as though it should be more of an important thing because pretty much from the Christmas episode onwards in season five, we just don't see them. It immediately transitions into the My Villain Academia stuff, which whilst I enjoy it, it does kind of make where they are right now kind of feel a little bit off. Like we, as far as we're concerned, they might well have been just going about their lives as normal. Now we learn that they were under lockdown because of, you know, the risk of getting murdered, which is itself something I think that should have been mentioned within the main series because it's one of those little short facts that feel kind of conspicuous by its absence. However, unlike Save Rescue Training, that is about as far as being close to important as this episode gets, with it as a whole entity feeling a bit more like the baseball episode. A lot of fun for what it is, a hell of a lot of fun for what it is, but not something I can kind of sit here and say it's a much, much watch episode. I think that of all the OVAs I've watched thus far for My Hero Academia, Save Rescue Training is still probably the one that should have been a mainline episode, given what that ends up bringing into the wider narrative, particularly when that was actually made is in relation to the main series. That was the first hint as the relationship between Shoto and Endeavor. That was the first time we got any kind of hint to Endeavor and then look into the character of Shodo Todoroki, the fact that they just put that in an OVA, which has never been really officially released as part from being an, an extra on some v DVD Blu-ray packs released years ago, is mind-boggling to me. It's not even available on Crunchyroll, for goodness sake. I find that maddening. Such an important episode, it's not there, but hey, that's a rant for a whole other time. I will have to say that, yeah, I understand why this episode is not in the main series, because... Well, duh, it was only really made this year, so it couldn't have been put out for a season previously because it didn't fucking exist. But even still, with that said, I kind of feel it's one of those cases where the fans should make make a uh, like a, a complete timeline thing where this this is where you watch this movie, this is where you watch this OVA because it's some way relevant. I know with the movies, there's a little bit more nebulousness there as to what's canon and what isn't. I have noticed that they have been trying to make the movies a little bit more canon or at least elements of them. But hey, that's a whole other discussion for a whole other time. I just think that this this episode feels though it probably could have been an, OV, uh, an episode in the main series. But at the same time, I understand why it isn't. A lot of people might have just dismissed it as being filler. Or alternatively dismiss, dismissed it like I did initially. Thinking that it was just existing for the sake of promotion and product placement. But hey ho, diddly do, we get into the overview itself. And I have to say that this was a genuinely fun OVA. I love the fact that I... It turned out the way that it, it it did. Yes, it wasn't going to end up being some big, grand uh, genre narrative redefining thing, but for what it is, it was a ton of fun. And I love the fact that by a sheer quirk and serendipity, this is period appropriate for the time of year that I'm recording this video. This OVA takes place around New Year's Eve. This video comes out around New Year's Eve. That's great for me. <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to spin this one out to a series of uh, holiday specials like I did with the Christmas episode, but hey, I really got a kick out of it. With that said, I just want to say, you know, leave a comment, leave, let me know what you thought about this one down below. I would be going into comment corner here and now, but it's kind of a bit hard to do that with this because we are talking about an OVA. I don't know where, what comments I'd really do with this. And given that people are mostly talking about the Vigilantes reviews, I do... It would be better to bring their videos and their thoughts rather into those videos than bring them into here. Particularly for anyone who actually hasn't read Vigilantes or, hey, if you're watching this in future, watch Vigilantes. But we'll see if that's going to be the case at all. But anyway, thank you all for listening. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment section down below. And see you next time. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, favourite, subscribe, click the bell and do all the YouTubey stuff that YouTube wants you to do. Go on, it'll do me a power of good. Until next time, my friends, goodbye.